<laughs> don't don't start now. <laughs> We're going to just do the quick photo op, but you want to introduce Carmen first? Oh, we got to do a photo op first? Yeah. Okay, let's do the photo op first. Quick Carmen, I'm sorry, yeah, sweet. Say one more, Carmen? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've never done this before, so please forgive me. Um, well, first, let me um, just bring him out. Yes, uh, and this man needs no introduction. He's a good friend of mine. We started in the business relatively at the same time. I remember back in the Ken I Borrow Dollar days, and I was in Northern California, and uh, my partner, King Tech, and I played a lot of his music on a show we called The Wake Up Show. And um, since then, we had a chance to meet each other, and reading um, the parts of his book that I've read just reminded me of a lot of my journey, to be quite honest with you. And, I want to thank him um, for this piece of work, for his honesty. I don't know if a lot of you guys had a chance to read it yet. Who's read it? Anybody? You know, read? It's an extremely honest book. Um, it's a tale of a, a, a young man um, who uh, grew up like a lot of us have, feeling disenfranchised from you know, the American dream and went out and accomplished it, being aided by a very strong foundation that he's had in his mother. Uh, Dr. Mahalia Hines, who will be here with us as well. Uh, so without further ado, I want to bring out Common, ladies and gentlemen. And his mother, Dr. Mahalia Hines. Give it up one more time for his mom, Dr. Hyde. Hi. Hi. One day it all makes sense. Is it starting to make sense to you right now? Yeah. Some things are starting to make sense and some things I, I don't understand. And I realize that I will never know everything. And I hope we can understand that and know that every day we learn it. So. I, some things are, are coming together, and, and I've been enjoying life from, from that perspective, and then I'm still seeking and still searching. Still seeking and still searching. Um, just real quick, I, I know we only got so much time, but I, you know, I, I really feel like this is my brother. We, we've been through so much in our careers and living parallel lives. Um, both got into this uh, for the sake of hip-hop culture, you know, and, you know, at that time when we first started, we... I'm sure you had no idea you'd be starring in your, your you know, get starring in a feature film and doing a, at least ten films to date, and mm. you know, having as many albums as you put out from the beginning, and having accomplished so much, you know, just from a dream of being a rapper, yeah. and <laughs> being able to make all that has happened happen for yourself. Similar, similarly, I've had some successes in my career, but. The thing about you that I like so much is you've always stayed so grounded, yeah. Rashid, and nothing. I, there's nothing that's ever changed about you in this process, except during the Electric Circus days when you start dressing like Erica Badu. <laughs> 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 it's like, it's like. <laughs> 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 it's like you know, you know, but other than that, you've been the same guy. Other than that, I'm <laughs> you, and, and then real quick, I, I want to give him credit because Kanye West is a genius to me. Uh, musically, he, he, he's a um, very outspoken person and, you know, Kanye endured a time in hip-hop culture where it wasn't cool to be, you know, expressive in the way he's been and to wear tight clothes and colorful things and 
Um, and you know, he kind of surpassed the whole machismo era and made it cool to be expressive and step outside of the box. But I often give those who've come from his lineage, the Big Shines and the Cy High, the Princes, and everybody who's come out since Kanye, I give credit to Common that Kanye is a byproduct of his lineage and what he's done since uh, the early 90s. And all that he is today, after reading this book, you will find is, is because a lot has to do with his mother, Dr. Hines, who stood by his side. When, you know, the first story I read, and I'm gonna go back to your beginnings, is uh, you say some of your first emotions you felt, you ever felt were, um, I think, happiness and fear. Love and Lo fear. Love and fear. Yeah. And one of your first memories, it seems, seems like, is an incident that happened with your father. Yes. And I want to see if Dr. Hines could talk about the time that, you know, early in your life, and how old you were at that time, that your father actually kidnapped the two of you, right? right. Yes. Yes? <laughs> and drove you to Seattle? Yes. yes? On the way to Seattle. On the way to Seattle. We quite get there. We were on the way to Denver. What happened? Uh, basically, and, and it really seems so long ago, it's really hard to, you know, realize that was me. So if I missed some of it, I had to go back and read it what the book said, okay. <laughs> I have read the book. But uh, basically it was during a time when he was playing in the ABA and uh, he felt, to make a long story short, that it would be great for him to return with his family. But during that time, um, basically we were not a family because he was going through some struggles in his own life. But um, we didn't have much choice Rashi was actually going with me. He was about four years old. And uh, because uh, it was at gunpoint, there wasn't much choice. But the whole time, I think I was always thinking that I didn't think he would really harm us, but knowing that he was not himself, I wasn't sure. So I always thought about what I could do. And what I did was tell him I had a headache simply sent him into the store to get the pills, and then I dropped them in his pot. So he got very sleepy, uh, because I put about a bottle of aspirin or aspirin <laughs> in the Man. pot, and it does seem funny now. And uh, when he, he got sleepy, so he laid down, and I simply told her she was going out to play and go to the door. And so we left and called the police. Do you, you remember a little bit of that? I actually don't remember it, but it's somewhere in my in my subconscious and somewhere in my psyche that I know it happened. And you know, a lot of what I deal with in, in this book and a lot of things I recognize as a as a human being now is that so many things that happen to us as children, you know, we deal with as adults too. And if we really some of the things we don't even know that we're dealing with, and it may be an abandonment issue, it may be a you know, you may be in 